What's going on, Jack Bates fans? Tom Lloyd here. I hope everyone's having a great week. It's Wednesday. Um, welcome to Jack Live. We're really excited to be here. Excited to have you guys here with us. Um, if you're watching this replay, feel free to share it um, out there on the old Facebook, and uh, we'll get some get some people in here here in just a minute, and uh, we'll go from there, guys. I hope everyone's uh, enjoying the week and uh, really just having a having a good one. Although it's snowy and everything around the country, um, I hope you guys are all staying warm and staying indoors. So. That will be good. I'm gonna work on getting getting our guest in here tonight, and uh, we'll see what we can do about that. I hope uh, hope you guys are all getting out fishing if you want to or if you can. Um, but we are. Bear with me here just a moment. That ain't gonna work. John Hunter, if you are on here, brother. Uh, Go ahead and jump in here and make a comment down there at the bottom, and we'll get this thing kicked off. For some reason, it is not allowing me to invite him. You're on duty, staying warm. Oh, not staying warm. Okay. Well, sorry about that, Kevin. I appreciate your service uh, as an EMT out there. And yes, it has. Uh, we are in beautiful, sunny. 40 something degree Florida. How exciting is that, right? Um, no, we are down here actually on a business trip and um, having to deal with the weather down here too. And it's obviously nowhere near as bad as back home and all that jazz, but it, it, it is uh, definitely unseasonably cool down here. Um, hey, John, if you're in here yet, buddy, just uh, go ahead and throw a comment down there in the bottom and we'll get you in here get you live but Micah I hope you're doing good brother Kevin good to see you other Kevin good to see you too um, guys we're gonna have a great guest tonight uh, John Hunter he's a FLW Tour Pro um, fishing out there on the tour this year it was on the Elite Series last year and just doing work and trying hard to trying hard to do it so um, hey man I'm gonna get you get you on here they switched something up on me um john says or uh, yeah john says john hunter's the greatest of all time that's, that's right good stuff good stuff what's up mr lloyd i'm sure john it looks like he's getting added right now so we'll get you in here pretty quick Jimmy, how are you? Mr. Sean, what's going on? Dylan, how you doing? Um, good stuff. Um, we'll have to uh, wait and see here. Waiting on, waiting on him to add himself here. Uh, hang on, guys. Sorry about this. John, it should come up for you uh, on there. It'll be on your personal page, unfortunately, on that deal. And then uh, we'll, we got the shared to your, your fishing page. So. Dylan, uh, we got them on our website at jackbaits.com. We got the digital camo. It's a fitted uh, with the JB on the back, too. So good stuff. Good stuff. Well, good, Jake. Jason, that's awesome, brother. I appreciate that. Um, <laughs> yeah, you was out there fishing yesterday, braving that cold. I saw you got caught on camera sneaking around out there.
Sorry about that, guys. We're having some technical difficulties tonight. Yeah, right. Get out of here, Kevin. Sorry, guys. We're trying to get this get this deal rolling. Um, not sure what's what's going wrong tonight. Of course, it's got to be something. We're both actually out of our element, and uh, we do, uh, Joe. We have John Hunter that we're trying to get added into here and uh, get him online here. Well, um, hey, John, if you can hear me, uh, if one of your buddies has got is if they're watching this, see if we can add them on there. Um, have them comment down there as well. No answer. What's going on, Mr. Lafferty? Sorry, guys, I'm struggling here tonight with this feed. Yeah, yeah, huh? Sure, sure, sure. Haven't had an issue for five weeks, and all of a sudden, what's going on, Miss Debbie? How are you? What's up, Adam? You're with John. Let me try to invite Nick here. Get this off. Come on. Let's see if Nick can add us here. What's up, Mr. Jeff Clark? How are you, buddy? Hey, Tom. I know, it's just frustrating. It's just frustrating for sure. Thanks a lot, Chris. I appreciate it. Hey, Nick, uh, you should be getting a notification right now. I hope. Um, I don't know what's going on. I got full bars, full service. Everything's good on there. <laughs> Anybody got any tips? Thanks, Joe. Invite them again. Let's try. Invited you again there, Nick. Yeah, this weather's crazy, Jeff. Uh, man, I don't know what to what to say. They got a freeze warning down here in Central Florida, and it's pretty nuts. Pretty nuts for sure. That's a good. That's a good, Adam, for sure. Um. Yeah, yeah, that's right, Jeremy. Um, you know, you think you got it all figured out, and then, then you don't, and that's just the way it goes. And uh, you know, we may have to, may have to boot this for a second and relaunch it. So be patient with us, guys, for another minute. Hey, hey, there he is. <laughs> What kind of phone are we broadcasting on here? Hey. Hey. There he is. Sorry, let me close the computer one out. Were you trying to do it on the computer? Yeah. Oh, well, that's the problem. Well, you didn't tell I me thought... that. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. How you doing, man? I'm doing good. How are you? Doing good. Doing good. You guys cold up there? Yeah, we're, I mean, we're in Jacksonville, and it's still freezing. It's like 37 that's, degrees. Yeah, that's insane. That makes it – gets you ready to go to Okeechobee, huh? Heck About yeah. 10 degrees warmer down there. Yeah, I got <laughs> to break the boat in tomorrow. And we're looking at a forecast of 31 in the morning. So Wow. Where are you guys going? 
Uh, we're gonna run out here. We're right by the St. John's River, so we're gonna go put okay. in. Uh, go take a cruise. Right on. I don't right know. On. I, I'm, I'm currently with a couple of my buddies. Uh, so tonight during the uh, during the conversation, if anybody you know has a question for them or uh, like let them weigh in on some of them, they're both big sticks in the fishing world. Mike fishes the Bassmaster Opens, and Nick fishes the BFLs, and was a super super successful uh college angler so sweet just sweet so, well that's so you guys we're gonna get there i mean yep. they taught me a lot of stuff that that i know so uh there you go we're gonna get them in here before the night's over for sure so well good stuff man well guys i uh, appreciate you bearing with us tonight go ahead and uh hit that share button again and let everybody know we're up and running uh hit that like button a few times too um but guys i want to introduce you to a good buddy of mine now um flw tour pro mr john hunter um he's actually down here in florida with us as well um we're actually a little south from where he's at but um doing a got a business trip going on right now for me and then he's uh heading down to okeechobee i believe is that right yep that's right on the way down uh make a couple pit stops on the way down but we'll be there get to okeechobee saturday afternoon finish rigging the rods and uh, get on the water sunday for the first day of practice Good stuff. Good stuff. Well, what what are you rigging up whenever you get down there without giving too much away? No, definitely your typical Florida stuff, play jigs, swim jigs, uh, some, some sort of topwater moving bait, speed worm, and then uh, the big way to get the Jack Tungsten ready, one ounce. I would usually have a one ounce, one and a half ounce for uh, punching and then have some sort of jig on uh, to flip the more like isolated reeds. Sweet. Sweet. That's awesome. That's awesome. So uh, I'm sure you've seen the weather and everything like that. And heck, it's been cold since they were down there for that Costa. I mean, is it is it going to be is it going to be like that this whole time or what? No, it's supposed to be a little bit of a warming trend, which could really set up to be the perfect storm for uh, Okeechobee. You know, these you need these cold snaps and these these longer periods of cold to get the fish coming off the lake and into spawn. So. Um, I don't know. Just looking at the weather, it could be it could turn it into a total slugfest, um, just depending on how warm that water temperature could get uh, within the few days. And I think a lot of it depends on how much sun uh, sun we get versus clouds. And that sun really tends to warm it up quicker than just the air temperature alone. Sure, absolutely, absolutely. Well, um, what uh, have you been down to Okeechobee a couple times now? I guess. Yeah, I've quite a bit. There. I've been down there. I mean at least once for the past four or five years, I've only fished two major tournaments there. Uh, so sure. A third, you know, big event there. Um, and I've never had a good finish, but I think I've, I think I've learned enough down there now where I should be able to make the adjustments. Uh, I've had some good practices, but hopefully I've, you know, learned enough things to be able to put it together and make the right adjustments and finally uh, put a good tournament together and make it happen on game day. Sure. Absolutely. Well, you're, uh, you're definitely, doing it right and hanging in there so that's awesome um so t walk us through some of what you've uh kind of got got the last couple of months trying to get ready for this i know it's kind of a mad dash all the time for you guys to get everything ready get sponsors lined out get jerseys made boats rigged you know obviously you're just now breaking your boat in yeah. um i say it every year that i'm gonna start earlier on this process and i really do yeah. like i feel like but it just no it, ma it does not matter how early you start you still just seem to get done at the last second um yeah, it's, it's no one in particular spot there's no one you can point a finger at um it just happens that way so it's always stressful but uh it always seems to work out in time you just gotta stay on top of it and uh make sure you get everything done in time uh so yeah it's uh looking forward to it i still got a lot to do between now now and sunday but yeah. uh get it all done and make it happen so what's the biggest thing uh a guy that doesn't tournament fish, especially at your level, um, getting ready to go into a season like this, wouldn't think about? Uh, yeah, I mean, tournament fishing, the details are everything. Um, you know, making sure all of your line's fresh. You know, when you store a line, uh, one big thing can be, the you know, the conditions you store it at. If you leave it in some, you know, too cold, then it gets too hot and it gets too cold, uh, which can be, which can be a big deal when you live somewhere like I do in the middle of the country that, that faces all the seasons. So, you know, that's why they make that good bourbon though. 
Yeah, that's right. They do do that. <laughs> so while I'm sitting there checking all my line, I can I can make sure I'm drinking some good Well, bourbon. no, that's what they say is that that's what makes a good bourbon is they have all the, oh, yeah. the right temperatures, right? Yeah. So yeah. you get all seasons. Yeah, I can I can attest for the good bourbon. Uh, but there no, you know, so that's one thing. Like line, I did that the other day. I sat down and made sure uh, – all my line was, you know, it wasn't brittle and was good and tested it all. Uh, I had to throw away some and um, obviously kept some and then put some new reor. You know, a lot of reorganizing. Uh, I spent like three straight days reorganizing. Uh, I had lures hanging from like every possible place in my whole entire house. It was a disaster. Yeah. But um, no, I mean, just the details, the little things, uh, making sure everything's tightened up on your boat. Um, your graphs are updated. Um, there's so many things. I mean, the list could go on and on. Um, but just making sure, you know, double checking everything and paying attention to the details. <laughs> Absolutely. So you mentioned one thing in there that kind of piqued my interest there is checking your line and uh, figuring out what's good and what's bad. So for an average angler, what, or, you know, a tournament angler, even for that, what, how do you test your line um, in a, you know, a setting that's not fishing that you can tell that it's not good line? I mean, typically, I'll I'll just take it and give it, like, a stress test with my hands. I mean, okay. obviously, okay. like, 20, 25-pound test, it's going to be pretty tough. Um, sure. But yeah, with my, you know, lighter fluorocarbon lines, I'll just wrap it around and then pull on it. And if it okay. – I just give it a judgment call. Like if yeah, it, absolutely. If it, and then also, you can tell, too, if it's holding memory, you can take it off your spool. And if it's holding a lot of memory, it's probably – time to go if it's still not like limp and soft if it's kind of hardened up, um that's another what's, good thing what's your line of choice right now uh, i use p line uh it's okay. by far the strongest fluorocarbon line i've i've ever used and uh i like that uh that comfort sure absolutely well we had a quick question here we'll get into some questions so guys feel free to ask some questions and whatnot um, and we're actually going to give away some of John's favorite tungsten uh, from Jack Bates, Jack Tungsten, uh, tonight. So feel free to ask a bunch of questions tonight. You can ask it to John about the tour. You can ask it about, you know, anything that comes to do with fishing or anything outside of fishing. I'm sure he's got some stories or something he wants to talk about. Um, and also, like he said, he's got some, some buddies there with him that we can definitely get pulled in on the conversation. But uh, Jimmy – um, says, what boat are you fishing from this year, and what advantage do you think uh, you'll feel from it? Uh, I'm in a Falcon again this year. Uh, this will be my third year in one. And, uh, man, it's just been an absolutely awesome boat. Uh, I've been in quite a, been in quite a few of them now uh, over the years, riding with friends. And, uh, and it's, and man, it's just definitely, uh, definitely one of the best one of the best I've ever been in. I'm, I'm running the 205 this year versus the 21-footer. Um, we're last year on my schedule, I had really big bodies of water like Rayburn, uh, Toledo Bend, um, Champlain, uh, Great Lakes, um, just a lot of really big bodies. And this year I do go to some bigger places, but not at, you know, we go to St. Clair and we do go to Champlain for an open, um, but not as, as big a bodies. And I got to test drive the 20 and, uh, I really liked it. So I'm going to give, give, uh, that whole a try this year and uh just from the test ride i had one the other day i mean it's a killer boat uh a little different storage system so i'll see how i like that but looking forward to to getting in it tomorrow will be the first uh sure. first to go out with my own uh boat with a suzuki on it and uh ready to break it in and see how it runs there you go what's the what's your favorite feature about a falcon a lot of uh, guys don't know even about them at all so they're they're built they're built uh differently they they have uh they're with a multiple stringer system so most boats have one stringer uh normal bass boat they have multiple ones which is how a bay boat is constructed um so they took the salt water uh the salt water mind of of uh whole construction and applied it to fresh water which really gives you a lot better uh rough water ride um but you don't you do not sacrifice any of your uh any of your performance or handling that you really want in a bass boat. So it's really just offers everything you want, the, the, the handling, the, the speed and the, the ride and the rough water and the stability. Gotcha. You mentioned that Suzuki, I know you and Chad and Brandon are all running those. Uh, 
Is that is that going to be the way of the future coming up, or what's going on with those? Yeah, I mean, if you want to guarantee, if you want to be guaranteed to go fishing every day, that's going to be the future. Because I mean, man, they're just so so reliable. You, you really don't ever have to worry. I mean, I'm not kidding. I didn't have a single issue. And people say, yeah, but it was only a year old. I mean, I had 300 hours on my engine last year at the end of sure. the year. Yeah, well, you I, guys put some hours on them. Oh, yeah. What brand? If it isn't Suzuki, you would have had an issue between zero and 300 hours. Sure. I mean, I changed the oil in it, and that was it. And I pro and I can swear to that. Um, so, yeah. yeah, I mean, as far as reliability and perfor even performance, it's killer. The mid-range power on that, as far as uh, throttle response, um, it's it's really unbelievable. Sure. So we're going to see a bunch more of those coming out, I'm sure, soon, I guess, on hanging on the back of some boats. Oh, yeah, no doubt. That's good. That's good, man. That uh, Obviously, it you know, it's all good for competition and gets, gets everybody making things better. So, um, you know, that's the way we, we come about too. I mean, from Jack's perspective, I mean, obviously if we didn't have competition, we wouldn't have to try. And, uh, so that's obviously better for the, the fishermen, better for the angler, um, you know, things like that. So, so you're going to Okeechobee now. Um, what, uh, what other event are you most looking forward to this year? I actually, I did a podcast with FLW today and I told Kyle, that I would not, I would no longer talk about my favorite or the event that I'm looking forward to the most and the event I'm looking forward to the least. Cause okay. I think thanks. I did that two years ago before the elite series started. And I think my, the one I said I was looking forward to the most, I finished second to last. And the one I said I was looking forward to the least, I finished, I, I made a top 10. And so, yeah. Okay. Uh, How about this? How about this? What, uh, <laughs> what town are you looking forward to going to the most? How about that? Um, I mean, it's going to be cool to be able to go to a couple of tournaments in, in my home state. It's been, sure. I have yet to fish a, a giant, you know, a large national level tournament, uh, in Kentucky. And, uh, this year we have two of them. So it'll be cool to sure. uh, be able to do yeah. that. A lot of my friends and family would be able to come out and attend because, uh, I mean, I just don't really have any tournaments really close to the house. So, yeah. uh, that'll be neat. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh. I guess since you're not wanting to give away one of those, um, <laughs> let's <doing> see. <laughs> let's see. Uh, what's the – okay, you got – is there any uh, lakes on the schedule you haven't been to? Um, to fish a tournament. As, as far as the tour goes? Yeah. No, I, and the open. And all of them? All of them, yeah. Okay, I, I good deal. Some sort of tournament. I, I fished a tournament in all of them except Lanier. But I've been on Lanier. Okay few times like not like i mean just a few days before so that's definitely sure. the cleanest uh lake on the schedule for me gotcha is this year have some sort of trend to it you think you're going to be power fishing more or finesse fishing more i mean it felt that, yeah they definitely set the schedule up for optimal fishing um and timing it'll be i mean we should catch every lake just about at its best time um or sure. you know, one of the best times uh florida will be awesome or it should be uh with the weather lining up um and uh then yeah hair's change should be great uh be able to catch them pre post and probably spawning there lanier will be awesome it'll be full bone pre-spawn probably and they'll be biting um cumberland will be great uh yeah i mean kentucky will be mid-may it's a great time to be there so sure. and St. Clair is just the fish there are so stupid big right now. Um, I'm sure that'll be great last year. Everybody saw what happened uh, in the uh, Elite Series event. How many 20 pound bags? There was like 30 one day. So yeah, oh, that'll man. be. A, but uh, so they should all be really, really solid. I think uh, as far as catching and weight and all, just everything. Absolutely. Well, good stuff. Um, got another question here. Um, do you feel that power fishing or finesse fishing is more your style or your favorite? Um, I don't or something I, in the middle. Yeah, something in the middle. I really try to be not stuck on one thing. I try to, I try my best to fish the conditions and, uh, and stick to, you know, try to listen to the fish and uh, do what they, what they want. If they're not biting, yeah, I'm going to stick try to finesse all day but uh sometimes you finesse it in the deal if they're not biting sometimes you got to force feed them so gotcha 
Um, I'm going to throw this question out there. It may go along the same lines of what we talked about a minute ago, but uh, where do you feel you'll be able to fish your strengths the most? Well, let me back up. What's your, what would you consider your number one strength in fishing? Uh, you know, I typically tend to like going to clear, clear bodies of water, okay. uh, you know, where like, like the Northern lakes, um, like places like Lanier and Smith Lake. Um, so th those are the ones that I usually feel a little more comfortable. Uh, sure. so yeah, that, I would say that would be my strength if I had to, <laughs> if I had to, if I had to name one. Absolutely. Um, John says, uh, John Swin Swindler, is he sitting there with you, or is that somebody else? No, it's no. He's not. okay. All right, sorry. Um, uh, when would be the appropriate situation to fish shallow or around points at Kentucky Lake, and when would be the appropriate time to fish offshore at Kentucky Lake? Um, yeah, I mean, it just depends on how uh, how warm of a spring they have and how far of, in the progression cycle they are in moving out. You know, if it's like, if it's colder, there's going to be a lot more fish in those creeks and bays and stuff. And they, they'll tend to work their way back out the same way they come back in. So like, like early mid May, they're going to be on those transition and lead in banks coming out and they're going to be on those, those points, those secondary and primary points into the creeks. And there'll be a lot of fish on those. And then they'll just constantly more will keep pushing to the river to try and get in the current where there's more, more current on those river schools. Um, but there'll still be, there'll always be some schools on those points in the creeks. Um, those are like, you know, more extended and secondary points. Um, but yeah, those are the first places they get after they get done, uh, in the bays in the spring. Gotcha. Good deal. Um, <laughs> Jason Marshall says you must be hard up for company hanging out with those dang Huff boys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah it's a tough crowd <laughs> tough crowd i hear you um so let's switch gears a little bit you were talking about uh, a couple of these guys that you used to fish college with what do you uh let's get them in here on some of this and what do you guys think uh, as far as the high school and college circuit um how that thing's going and how that's progressing come on over mike i'm gonna get them over here absolutely I'm gonna push out the. There you go. Lift that up, Nick. If you don't care, this this table so we can scoot it back more. There we go. So who we got with us? We got Nick, I guess. Either that or you stole his phone. One of the two. There we go. Perfect. So we got. You tilt that down a little bit. Yep. Just a little bit. Good deal. Perfect. So, Perfect. This is Mike Huff and Nick Huff right. with uh, – all, right. all right. So my sophomore year, I fished with Nick at Georgetown College. And then they fished together the next year, and I fished with another guy named Vincent. And then my senior year, I fished with Mike that year. So uh, okay. we all kind of fished with each other and mixed and match uh, partners uh, throughout college and uh, all had a pretty successful – college career um so that that that's that's these guys backgrounds yeah gotcha so right on so what do you guys think again, yeah what was your question again tom what no my question was just what do you guys think of the, the high school and college thing i mean we support a lot of colleges a lot of high school guys and it's uh it's been crazy especially down south and i know it's kind of pushing more north um as they go but i mean what do you think is the biggest driving force in that that whole high school college circuit well, the college circuit, I mean, it's great. You, that's like the, the time you can actually learn the most those four years. I don't know about these guys, but those four years at college were just amazing as far as taking the next steps and learning and fishing against guys from across the entire country. Yeah. I'm, I'm so jealous that the high school fishing really started right after we graduated high school and went yeah. to college. So I'm, like I was saying, I'm really jealous that we didn't get to experience that. You know, it just, you start even earlier in life. So mm -hmm. uh, get to make those connections with people and fish different lakes and figure out, you know, your strengths and weaknesses and, 
and what you can develop on. And so it, it's, it's pretty great. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, it's crazy. It's I crazy. know we had, go ahead. Oh, Sorry. Go ahead. I was just, saying, oh, I was just really, you really, how diversified you get through college fishing, um, the traveling and the new bodies of water that we got to see. You, you can just see yourself evolve and grow as a fisherman, uh, every body of water and lake that you tackle and go to the next one. It's like you were just this kid who was stuck in your hometown, your hometown lakes. And then uh, that, that college, you know, college fishing is what gave us the platform, the opportunity to get out and go see these new places and grow. Sure. And I'm sure uh, you'd agree with me, but I mean, as far as the the number of uh, college anglers that have now become successful on the tour, um, on the FLW tour, on the Bassmasters, is is no no question has a direct correlation to how that high school and college has been progressing. I mean, just being able to see you know the the Jordan Lees and guys like you guys just out there just doing it, and um, you know it, it's it's awesome to see that. But, I mean, it, it's giving those guys just a leap platform, um, like you said, just to fish all these different lakes. I mean, we got guys in Missouri that I was talking to a high school angler the other day, and he was talking about going down to Sam Rayburn. And it's like 12 hours away from the house. And I'm thinking, as a 16-year-old kid, you're going to Sam Rayburn to go fish a tournament? That's freaking awesome. I mean, that's you're, you're going to learn so much. Even if you don't catch them and, you know, do well or whatever, you're still going to learn unbelievable amounts of – people and just different tactics to to use and so it's just it's really neat to see for sure it is yeah, yeah. The, the college circuit i think our junior year there was jordan lee matt lee brett pruitt john hunter uh, you had jody white shane yeah. LeHue, yeah. LeHue. like it, the competition is what you know makes everybody better and, yeah. and there was so many guys even now jake whitaker new to the yep the leads yeah. are just relations and yeah. what's that? Oh. Um, Jeremy says uh, what's the best advice you guys could give to a first time tournament fisherman wanting to get into this stuff I would definitely say um, try to join as a I would say go as a co-angler first I mean you can learn so much just from watching people that have been there before and done things you know certain ways and and you get to kind of digest a bunch of stuff that, um, you know, different people do well or different people don't do well. So going where you really learn a lot, I would say. It's like a lot cheaper, too. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. Fish with this. What do you think? And too, for sure. Just the more people you can hop in the boat with and go fishing with, you know, the more things you see. They do things differently. They go to different areas. You know, that's that's a – a big player yep which one of you is fishing the bfls john said you are okay yeah. what uh you know that was the biggest thing whenever i first learned you know started tournament fishing was that i didn't realize it was just as easy as going to pay your money and going to jump in a boat so um walk us through that a little bit and how uh how you fished your first tournament through the bfls uh like i said i started out i think in my senior year of high school, I fished a couple as a co-angler. And so, and, you know, luckily they're all really regional. So you get to go to some lakes that you've been to before, but maybe not, a, you know, gone all around the lake and you get to see where guys go. And um, so, like you said, it's just as simple as just kind of paying your dues. And, and, uh, and then you kind of, um, we go, I went straight to college, you know, you fish all college and you realize, you know, maybe I can try this at the front of the boat. And so I've been doing that for probably four years now since I got out of college, but it's just an experience thing. I think, um, you know, you get the more time in the front of the boat and the back of the boat, the better you'll be. So. Absolutely. Uh, Holden Daniel, I'm just, go ahead. And I was just going to say, I mean, it's really simple. Uh, those BFLs through FLW, it's really simple. I mean, all you have to do is show, I mean, you pay, right? Yeah. And you yeah. show up as a co-angler, you show up at a meeting and uh, they draw your name and you make sure you have your gear there and you hop in the boat the next day and you're off to the race of fishing, yeah. fishing tournament. Yep, that's right. So Holden Daniels asked, what's the best way to join as a co-angler? 
Um, so that's just it, man. You literally go on FLW.com or FLW Outdoors or whatever. Um, you got to pay a membership fee uh, for the year. You get a magazine, a bunch of tackle and stuff like that. And then uh, you just register for whatever BFO you want to. So whatever area of the country you're in, um, you know, you just pick that region. You know, like in Missouri, there's the Oklahoma or, or uh, excuse me, Ozark Division. We got the Arky Division, the Oklahoma Division. You know, you guys got the LBL and um, then Volunteer. You know, there's all kinds of different divisions around there. So you pick whichever one. You pick whatever tournament you want to go to. And there's five tournaments per year for each one of those divisions. Um, and so you just pick whichever one it is and you sign up, pay, I think it's 115 or $35, something like that, um, for the one event. And then wherever the lake is, you go to the lake the Friday night beforehand. Um, typically they have it at a Walmart, they have a meeting and you go, um, go to the meeting, they talk about all the rules and then they'll send you a text message and say, Hey, you're paired up with John Hunter. And, uh, you know, you call him, talk to him at the meeting or whatever. And then the next morning you jump in the boat and you fish all day and you're competing against all the rest of the co-anglers that did the exact same thing you did. And John's fishing against all the boaters that did exactly what he did. And that's it. I mean, it's really that simple. If you got 135 bucks plus some gas money, plus some tackle and rods and reels and all that good stuff, um, you can jump in the boat and go fish with some of these uh, regional and local national pros i mean that's just fact of the matter and one thing one thing i'd like to add to uh tom is uh, to his point is uh one thing to keep in mind if you are going to join and go as a co-angler i think the first thing on your mind should be i'm going to learn um, yep and, and number two should be i'm going to compete and try and you know make a little make a little money whatever but number one priority should be i'm going to learn because um as a co-angler, you don't have any say. You don't have you don't have any control over where that boat goes. Um, uh, you're more so just along for the ride. You got to kind of adjust and uh, adapt to the situations that you're put in by your pro. Um, so so with that with that said, it, it is important going in with the mindset was Hey, I'm going to become a better fisherman today. I'm going to learn. I'm going to learn how to adapt to any situation I'm put into, and I'm going to learn to fish the conditions, and I'm going to learn either what to do by my pro or what not to do. But in some way today, I'm going to I'm going to become a better fisherman by it. If you go into the co angler process with that mindset, you're going to do a lot better. You're going to fish a lot freer. You're not going to feel as much pressure, and you're just going to you're probably going to have a better experience. And also, they have some, there's like Facebook pages where uh, co-anglers can link with anglers or like if you have different questions, you know, that we haven't answered or that Tom hasn't answered. Um, like I said, there's Facebook pages for that, that certain regions have set up. So that would be a good place to try too if you have more questions. That's a good point for sure. Um, Holden was the one that asked that question. Uh, he said he's from Springfield, which is where I'm from. So Holden, definitely uh, reach out to us on Jack Bates' uh, Facebook page, and we'll get you hooked up the way you need to be on that deal. So um, Jeff Clark says, always cast towards the front of the boat when fishing as a co-angler. Um, Jeff's just joking on that. But um, seriously, though, I mean, there is a lot of etiquette that goes along with uh, fishing out of the back of someone else's boat. I mean, these guys that are fishing out of the front of the boat have put in, you know, a day to three to five to, you know, a whole week of practice for these events. So you just need to understand that um, you are paying your money and you are fishing and competing. But as John says, you need to be you need to be able to be there to learn. And with that, you need to be respectful and courteous to um, your boater who is paying all the gas, you know, the gas. I mean, you need to split it with them, but he's paying the oil, the insurance, the, you know, getting the eye, you know, everything that has to do with that boat. And uh, you need to respect that as well. So that's for sure. So um, Sean Ripley says, I live in central Florida and I have a tournament coming up this weekend. I found a six and an eight and 12 foot of water with eelgrass coming up uh, three to four foot off the bottom. Couldn't really figure out what they wanted, seen them on the electronics, but could still couldn't pick them off. Any advice? Well, I'm curious. So he saw a six and an eight on his electronics? Uh, I don't know. That I found a six. I found six and eight to 12 foot. Okay, maybe he's, I'm sorry. He's just talking about the water depth. The eel so, um, yeah. yeah, with the eelgrass in that depth. I'm sorry, I read, read that a little bit wrong. Yeah, I mean, obviously in that situation, I think 
any of us would agree, you're probably going to start off with like a lipless um, or some sort of shallow diving, uh, like a square wheel or whatever is going to get down and just tick that grass. Um, square bill or a, a trap or a rattle bait is just a lot easier because you can really control that depth based on the speed you retrieve and the weight of the bait. Um, but man, if that doesn't work, you can always, I mean, if you're just a hundred percent certain, like with me, when I get into those situations, I, I don't get dead set that they're on, they're, they're on, they're on this patch of grass. I just know it. That's more of a deal where like you found the right stuff. Okay. Now you better just get the wind at your back or put the trolling motor on, on 40 or 50 and you better cruise and you cover as much water as you can because um, Florida, I don't know what lake he's on, but it can be really vast and there's a lot of the same stuff. Um, so a lot of times it's about just finding the little differences and, uh, and, you know, letting the fish tell you that. Uh, so just fishing around can be really effective. Um, I don't know if these guys, and uh, they might have something to add if you do, but, and then also, I mean, if you are certain they're there and maybe you catch them the one day and they're not on it the next day, um, something may happen. You might have to slow down. You might have to drag a worm through it or, uh, you know, throw a jerk bait or something like that. It's a lot of, something a lot of people don't do in Florida. It's kind of a little something that I don't really like to talk about, but it's throwing a jerk bait. Um, you know, if they get off a trap, they see a lot of them, um, pick up a, pick up a jerk bait, throw it out there and, uh, see what happens. Absolutely. Any particular color that he needs to focus on? Uh, what do you guys say? Everyone's got, see, this is, <laughs> this is what's cool about having three fishermen here. Everyone's got, um, Everyone's got Absolutely. their deal. I mean, for Florida, Mike, what's your favorite color? Mike, Mike had Mike had a top. He had a really good finish at Kissimmee last year throwing a trap. What's your? Well, I I was using the gold with black back. I, I like the gold and the black mix. I think it, it imitates a shiner really well. Just something simple like that. And like John said, I kind of tend to go to the jerk bait too. It's it's just something different down here that I think the fish just aren't used to seeing. Yeah. I'm the same as him. I like that gold black back, but I also like uh, just the good old standard uh, standard chrome one. And then uh, I, I really like the purple back uh, one as well. The purple back, I don't know why, uh, but I just feel like they bite it everywhere. Um, and then you can't, I'm giving you a few colors, but you can't go wrong with a, uh, with a craw colored one in the springtime. That's what I was about to say. So what, um, you know, I'm not a trap fisherman really, but uh, what? Why is that trap so so different? I mean, you guys are talking about golden and silver chrome ones there. Uh, you finally mentioned the crawl one, but I mean, you yeah. know, you go to Gunnersville or you go to Toledo or Rayburn or something like that, and it's red, 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 red. Well, What's the all, difference? It's all in the forage of what the fish are feeding on. Um, and Gunnersville, they are yeah, they are feeding on shad, but in the springtime, a lot of the times. Uh, so we're going to readjust here so we can get a charger plugged into this phone here. Uh, a lot of the times the fish are, uh, they're feeding on uh, crawdads in the spring. Um, sure. Well, that craw color is good. And, and also another deal on the Tennessee River why it's good is just because it's a, it's a really good match for that, for that water color. Um, it's a little bit, you know, a little bit more stained and, uh, it just, I don't know, they just really, really, really like it there. The Texas lakes, they really like it there um, around that, around the grass in Texas. It's a big, it's a big deal. So, but Florida, they're feeding on shad, shiners, but, you know, for the most part. So that's why that golden, those, those shiners, if you ever pick them up, they do have a little bit of a golden hue to them. Um, so that can be good. But man, don't get too carried away. And color is my biggest deal. I mean, find the fish, and I mean, usually if you find them well enough, the color isn't going to make the biggest difference in the world. I mean, you put yeah, it in front of them, they're going to eat it. Huh? If they stop biting, you might pick up, try a different. You might go from red to chrome or or gold back or something like that. But uh, the biggest thing is just is just finding them and. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't get too caught up on color. It's more just having the right presentation and the right bait is really the important thing. Sure. Um, Alexandria, or Alexander's, I don't know, that's girl or guy, I can't tell. But anyway, um, how do you get rid of dogfish when, they're, when they get on your bait? 
<laughs> I'm gonna let these guys answer because they taught me how to. I, I was on my second trip to Okeechobee and with them back in college. And uh, they taught me how, so I'm gonna let them. Nick, Nick's the professional at that. I'll, I'll let him yeah. talk. <laughs> I, I don't know if you want me saying how I actually get rid of them on 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 Facebook, but uh, just watch your fingers because they uh, they'll snap on you. So they have they have in their boat what they call the Punisher, and it's yeah. a metal bat. <laughs> it's a metal bat about that big, and we wrote on it the Punisher, and so you just give them a couple whacks to the forehead, and they'll stop. They'll stop. Biting. Yeah. Wow. No, but no really, doubt. The best way uh, to do it is uh, you grab them, just grab them behind the head, um, or underneath the gills, or underneath the gills, yeah. uh, and just you know, or just hang them off the side of the boat with pliers. I do that uh, sometimes too. Yeah, just yeah. grab your pliers and just grab your hook. And just get them, and just hold it that way, because they are really nasty and kind of slimy. So uh, they're just total pain in the butt. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, uh, that's my favorite way is to just grab them by the plier, grab the plier by the hook, and just shake them off on the side of the boat. There you go. Well, good stuff. So, uh, what's your favorite uh, PG story of uh, Mr. John? I know you boys got some something <laughs> funny that we could we could hear here. We're gonna put them on blast here. That's what we do on Jack Live. Luckily, he invited uh, you boys over here, so. Yeah. Man, that, I'm trying to, <laughs> PG is hard to find. All right, PG-13. All right, all right. Give, give us a second here. We'll think how, how about, yeah, we'll go on to something else. Um, but y'all be thinking about that. So let's do this. Um, we got quite a few people on here right now. Um, we're going to go for a three for um, – questions um we got some uh rapid fire questions for you boys tonight is brought to you by holiday and express stay smart hey, um, that's, where <laughs> that's where you are yeah. uh, y'all should have just come on down here and fish the lower end of that uh st john's but anyway all right so we'll go uh whoever wants to answer first we'll let you do it and uh we'll just go on here and we'll get all the answer from all three of you so um what's your favorite boat snack <coughs> Boat snack. I like Ritz crackers. Ritz crackers. Um, Plain Jane. What do you think? Nick. I like trail mix. Trail mix. Trail yeah, mix. Trail mix guy. Yeah. I'm. Uh, I am the. So there's the. I have very specific. I've got it dialed in. It is the Lance Nico peanut butter crackers. Man, they're almost like golden graham crackers with some peanut butter on them. Best thing ever. That's I the deal, huh? Box of them. There you go. There you go. All right. Well, what's your favorite lake? Period. Not okay. just this year. Go ahead. Let me think about it. Let me let me give you a for mine, it is the great can I give you the Great Lakes system? Because you can really like get to pretty much any of them. <laughs> no, let's not get a cop out there. Let's let's get specific. You I'm about to make you give me some GPS waypoints as your favorite waypoint ever. Let's say like Saint let's just say Detroit River because you Okay. Can, all right, things. that's fair. Probably between those two, so let's just say the Detroit River system. All right, I'll 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 take that one. That's yeah. actually an event, so I'll I'll, I'll give yeah. you that one. Okay, cool, that one. I'll I'll have to go with uh, Lake Champlain. I've I've been there twice, but it's hard to find a fishery that you can catch a six pound largemouth and a six pound smallmouth in the same day. So yeah, I'll go with that. There you go. All right, now let, don't fail us Southern boys. Don't be going <laughs> up north. Don't do it. Don't do it. I was going to say Champlain, but, you know. Oh, I'm, my God. I, I'll, I'll actually I'll switch it up here. I'm going to go with Table Rock because in college we went nope. there. We had a lot of success there. And they say that's the only lake you can catch a trophy in all three species. So it's got to be my favorite. I hear you there. That's that's. I don't know if that's a fact, but that's uh, that's you can definitely do it. That's for sure. And uh, I mean, got some donkey largemouth yeah. too, like yeah. lots of seven pounders in Table Rock. Yeah, I don't know about a lot right now. It, it's been down this year, boys. Uh, I hate to tell you that. As far as weights and stuff, we fished there in the fall. Uh, had a hundred and fifty something boat championship there from all around Missouri. Guys coming, and uh, it took twelve pounds a day to get a check. Or I'm sorry, 12 pounds total for two days to get a check. That is so false. Six pounds. 
That is false. I know, I know, but <laughs> my wait till, goodness. Wait till March and see how many seven pounders show up. They'll just appear. I right? hear you. <laughs> I hear you. That open ought to, or that uh, Costa that's there this year ought to be pretty good. Yeah. So, right on. Well, the next one, um, who is your fishing mentor? Who taught you the most about fishing? Well, that definitely has Someone been. outside of that room so we don't hurt anybody's feelings. Yeah, yeah. Definitely my dad. You know, I've been, I went with him and my granddad for a long time. You know, daytime, nighttime. They taught me just about everything I know. So Good deal. And these guys, so. Yeah. Uh, for me, it's definitely pro I mean, number one would be my uncle. He's the one who who introduced the sport of bass fishing to me, and uh, he really is the one who kind of laid it out and uh, and enticed me to chase the dream and to keep keep going after it. Um, then second off would be these guys and my other college buddies and uh, my buddies on tour. Man, you're always you're always uh, looking to your friends uh, for for new for new new support, ways. To yeah. Absolutely. Or whether it be, you know, uh, about how to cope with a bad finish or how am I going to do this? Um, you're always, you're always leaning on your, uh, leaning on your friends for that. So, uh, other than my uncle, it's definitely, uh, all my close, close fishing friends. All right. Uh, yeah, I definitely have to say, uh, well, Mike and I are first cousins. If, if okay. you all didn't know that, but, uh, and so, uh, growing up, his dad was always just, Going uh, about fishing, and so he taught us about everything we know, and and then like John was saying, you know, going through college, you're bouncing certain ideas off of your buddies that fish right next to you all year long and all summer long. So just uh, all the college buddies and Mike's dad and probably my granddad too. So and and Good for deal. for everyone listening, uh, they're talking about Mike's dad. His name's Rex Huff. He uh, he fishes the FLW tour as well. Right on. Right on. So he'll be down there fishing with you in yep. a couple of days, huh? He will. Yeah. Good stuff. Good stuff. Well, good luck to all of you for sure. Um, what is your, we're going to do two here. What's your least favorite technique or bait and your most favorite bait specifically? All right, Nick, you want to go first? Least favorite? Do I go same time? Least favorite, most favorite? Yeah. All right. Okay. Most favorite bait slash technique is I like flipping bushes. So like in Tennessee where we're from, when the water gets up in the summer, it floods these bushes. And uh, yep. so I'm usually flipping something like a half ounce jig or half ounce uh, sinker with a, you know, some kind of plastic on the back. Um, and least favorite, uh, probably drop shot or something like that. I, I'd feel a little out of whack on that. Just going so what do you do up at Champlain? Isn't that what everybody does up at Champlain? <laughs> I know, but up there, up there, up there, there you can a heavy rig. <laughs> okay. A booger on a hook up there and catch one. So. <laughs> All right, who's next? All right, I'll go. My my least favorite is probably, um, probably flip flipping bushes. It gets pretty <laughs> monotonous. <laughs> like unless they're Man. just. I mean, if they're biting, like I've been yep. to. Them, uh, Cherokee in East Tennessee, and what you go flip bushes all day for like four bites. I would rather just not go fishing. I mean, I well, I'd rather go out and try and like deep crank or something like that. That's probably my favorite deal, like going out and deep cranking or drop shot and isolated offshore cover. Like I like okay. to target isolated things offshore. I just feel like they're you know you can cover them with a few casts and be fishing. Um, I really like that stuff. Uh, so that I don't know. I would rather go do that. So I guess I would have to say like fish. All right, all right, all right. Hang on now. Hang on now. We're we're getting we're getting contradictory here on Jack Live and I'm not liking it. So first of all, first of all, all three of you guys said each one of you was their mentors. And now we're saying you love flipping bushes and hate drop shotting and you hate flipping bushes and love drop shotting. So how how is this gonna work? I mean if we're if we're all mentors here and teaching each other stuff, are we just holding back, boys, or what? Let me just say, we never took John to our good spots on Cherokee. <laughs> yeah. Go we figure, right? Because they're ball. scared. Yeah. yeah. All right. You're up next. Let's hear it. You're, you're going to not like. You want to go? I know my least favorite now. 
What is it? I just thought of it. It's a float and fly. Okay. Oh. Yeah. <clears throat> and these boys love it. Get imagine uh, yeah. that. Yeah. I yeah. like watching that bobber. <laughs> <laughs> it's like old times' sake. It's like crappie fish. Yeah, just like yeah. the That's right. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my least favorite. I, is slow rolling a spinner bait? That that would probably be my least favorite thing. Just daytime or nighttime. I've never done good slow rolling a spinner bait. My dad's the master at it, and I just cannot stand it. But most favorite, <laughs> favorite. What's thing going on here? Your mentor again? Yeah. <laughs> favorite thing, definitely flipping bushes. I mean, flipping okay. any a shallow cover. Yeah. You can. They need to take you to good spots. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Twenty-five. I don't think they were. You know. I don't think they were on bushes last time you were at Cherokee, there, John. <laughs> but they probably could have helped you out with something. My God. <laughs> good stuff um well guys uh we really appreciate you being on here for sure um i hope you guys all have a good uh good time down there in florida all seriousness and definitely be safe um down there and i'm sure it'll be a a little bit different of a tournament down there uh after the whole deal that happened down there so make yeah. sure everybody's safe and uh let's uh let's make sure Make sure everything goes well this time, and uh, I hope everybody has fun, and we appreciate you guys all being on with us tonight, and I appreciate you inviting the boys over to come hang out with us, and uh, you guys uh, be be careful down there, and we will talk with you all soon. Thank yeah, you. Thanks, thanks, for, thanks for having us. Yeah, appreciate thanks for having it. us. Absolutely. Thanks for everybody coming on to watch. Yeah. Tight lines. Thanks, guys. See you.